Hi, I'm Alistair and I'm making an escape room in a box. And one of the things about escape rooms is they don't just have a bunch of puzzles shoved together, but they actually have a narrative and a story that tries to engage players. And one of the problems I've been having over the last week or so is I couldn't really work out what story it was I wanted to tell with my box. As I've been adding more and more individual puzzle components, it's been becoming more similar to a game called Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. And that's a video game which is essentially about defusing a bomb. Now I didn't really like going in that direction for two reasons. Uh, one of which is that that game already exists. And secondly, I'm not really that keen on using a bomb as the core plot device in a game. Um, I'm essentially a pacifist myself and I don't really like the idea of having a weapon as the, the main element around which gameplay revolves. But I needed something else which I could use as the, the sort of the core story element, an explanation to players why they had to solve these puzzles, why there was a time limit they had to do it in, and the fact that there'd be some meaningful consequence if they failed to solve the puzzles in time. And it was after that that I was uh, thinking of my friend John. And John is a physicist who used to work at the CERN lab in Switzerland. Uh, so this is where the Large Hadron Collider is based. Now, I don't know much about physics. I don't know exactly what the purpose of the Large Hadron Collider was, but I understand it's something to do with smashing particles into each other to either find new subatomic elements, which are unknown as of now, or to give off energy. And, it seemed to me that that kind of story had a lot of elements of an escape room in it because there's unknown factors. Scientists now don't even know exactly what they're going to discover. There's sort of an element of peril or danger because this is something no one's ever done before. It involves very complex um, equipment and, you know, lots of high energy devices. And it, um, it also gave me the opportunity to make it a little bit more playful because if that's the Large Hadron Collider, well, the only thing that could possibly fit in a box this small would be a Portable Hadron Collider. Uh, so, from this point onwards, I'm no longer making an escape room in a box. I am making a Portable Hadron Collider, in which players will have to um, smash particles together, but in doing so, perhaps they set off a dangerous chain reaction and they have to shut the machine down in time in order to avert uh, an unwitting disaster. So now that I've settled on this idea for the theme and the story of the game, I could design a kind of a graphic identity that was going to match that. Um, so I loaded up Inkscape, which is my design program of choice. It's a fantastic open source uh, 2D graphics design program. And I just kind of came up with this uh, quick logo here. So I've got um, three ellipses, which I've just rotated, um, and then I've got three circles here, which are meant to represent atoms orbiting around this uh, central nucleus. So it's kind of a very generic chemistry, sciency, research, corporate logo, and I'm sure you've probably seen that uh, many times uh, to represent those kind of institutions. And then to go with that, I wrote um, the font out on this side. I found this uh, free font. This is called Headline 2. And I really liked this because it's got these kind of defects in it. It's not a, a perfectly uh, straight font. And I, th so I wanted this story to be that this is not a premium Hadron Collider. Uh, this is actually like a very cheap, done-on-a-budget Hadron Collider. It's a bit like if you bought a Hadron Collider from uh, Wish or, you know, other budget internet sites are available. Um, and, you know, when it arrived, it, you know, it didn't quite look the same as it did in the picture and perhaps it didn't fit together very well. It was a bit wobbly. And that's the kind of the, the story I want to tell. Um, so I liked the fact that this font kind of fitted that design. And then to extend that idea even further, rather than kind of print this really neatly on the side of the box, what I'm going to do is to uh, cut this out as a stencil and then spray paint this on the side of the box. So it's definitely going to look like some dodgy Hadron Collider that someone's come up with in a garage somewhere, for example. Um, and that's going to help tell the story that actually it's quite unsafe and, and something may well go wrong with it. Okay, so I've just laid some black card down 
and I've got my design which I've imported into Laser Gerbil from Inkscape. Just click play and we will let the laser, that's just going to trace the outline, that's going to burn through that card hopefully and so it's going to leave a stencil which I can then uh, spray paint on. So I've laid it out over the top of the box here and now I'm just going to spray, uh, I'm not going to do it that neatly to be honest, I'm just going to, oh that bit's popped up, there we go, and just go over the surface there uh, just to get the outline of the logo like that. There we go, that should probably do. Now I'm just going to repeat the same thing again but with the uh, text instead, go all the way over it like that. Okay, a bit more there. And now, if I just peel off this masking tape here, let's peel that back. Oh, I dropped a few bits there. And then let's move these little bits out of the way, trying not to spill too much. I don't mind it being a little bit approximate, but um, I like to get the inside of the letters coming off. There we go, that's not so bad inside of the D, that's blown away, uh, there we go. So there's been a little bit of um, sort of bleed under the edges of those letters but actually I don't mind that, I think that um, that kind of goes with the look that I wanted to have, do you want us to get that one off, come on, there we go. I might be able to just flick these out of the way, off the end of the, um, the box there. Stupid thing. Ah, come on, get out of the way. Try to do it. There we go. Unfortunately, not dried up. Uh, and there uh, we have just tidy it up a bit. There we go. That is now the uh, logo emblazoned on my box. Now, you can't have a Hadron Collider without having some Hadrons colliding. And what better way to represent that than with a NeoPixel LED strip, which is what I've installed in the top half of the board here. Now, this is running some code that was um, originally designed as a fireworks simulator, but the principle's quite similar. So we've got particles that start at one end of the strip here and they travel up, and some of them are gonna pass through and kind of just completely unaffected. Other ones are going to meet a particle which is coming in the other direction, and they're gonna collide and cause this explosion. And that's kind of gonna be the, the trigger that sets up the whole game, really. The idea is that this um, slightly shoddily made portable Hadron Collider is actually incapable of containing the amount of energy that gets released if they ever successfully make a collision. They weren't really ever anticipating it was gonna happen. So I haven't really quite finished this yet, um, but I do also have these uh, circular NeoPixel rings as well, and I thought the idea might be quite fun to introduce them along the way so that the, the particle does a kind of a loop-the-loop -loop motion on its way to um, the collision. I thought that might be quite a fun addition. But I think that's going to be a nice uh, kind of centrepiece in the top half of the box. I'll probably put some other elements around it still as well, but it kind of ties everything together, it explains the narrative of the game, and it kind of uh, creates a nice focal point. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that's going to turn out, I think.